We have a young gentleman sitting in the back there. We should stand up and introduce yourself, would you? My name is Mark Myers. Mark, Bill Rudge called me and wanted to know if I could help a man. And uh, I don't do this ordinary, but I met him. Seemed like a trying boy and had some parents in life. And we don't have, he didn't get a house nobody in the area wasn't available, so. Uh, well, he was in a motel stand, and we don't have the money to stay there, but he's trying to get a locate through all the agencies in the valley, so. And I'll tell you, sometimes we don't like to hear what God said, but God says, don't you have a vacant house? <laughs> and I said, yeah. <laughs> so I went and picked him up and took him to my vacant house and went home, got him a place to Bait, what he called cot, or not a cot, but a, yeah. And uh, he's out applying now for some help to find a place to stay. Am I right, yes. Mark? Yes. So it's been a pretty busy week with all these things happening. And I don't know whether I can get through what I want to do, but I'm going to do it. The Bible says that when it's when the flood comes in, you know what? Go right through it. Don't back down. So here's my message in one piece of paper. <laughs> but that's what I usually do anyways, you know. And we're going to talk today about the flesh and the spirit. Boy, oh boy. We can talk forever on that. Do we have any napkins or any... Uh... Oh, where they're at? Mark cleaned up the side of the house there real good, so we appreciate that. There's another job your pastor does a lot of people don't realize. You know, sometime when you think you're a pastor or a businessman, you shouldn't have to do certain things in the church, but you have to do it. <laughs> you have to humble yourself. A lot of people won't humble themselves. That's why God blessed me beyond measure. Because he said in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth, Amen. and the truth will set you free. Amen. See, I was an alcoholic. He went to AA meeting like now, and there's nothing wrong with AA and GA, but my spiritual route is different sometimes. And well, it helps somebody, then you go and you promote and help them. So he's trying to help himself, and we are in the spirit, we have a fleshly spirit and a holy spirit, and there's a war going on. You know the old saying I always said, a guy said, boy, I'm a Christian, I never have any problems. I said, try witnessing. And he said, what's that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you'll never have any problems. The devil owns you, whether you know it or not. You know, you, you don't have to realize that some people aren't born again. The gentleman is telling me he is born again, and. So I believe it. Now it's my chance to show love, our chance, everybody's chance, and see what comes up on the situation. Although I'll never do it again because my ministry is not to take people off the streets. I've got a handicapped wife and she's scared and can't bring her home any people like I used to. So I have to be very careful what I'm doing. And uh, that's nothing against him, but you know how many times have I've been taken in my life by Christians, and you, and everybody here, and the pastor, and you meant well, but when Judgment Day comes, just think of that. God's going to honor every one of us here, and you're all witnesses. That's my encouragement here today about the flesh and the spirit, and we're going to involve three scriptures. Uh, Romans 13, 14, Romans 8, 38, and 39, and Romans 8, 1. But if you want to look up the book of Romans, why, get there. And uh, it's very important, uh, Romans 13, 1. And anybody that gets there, Romans 13, uh, bring it up and just say the first word of that, if you will, for me, when you get to Romans 13, 1. Whoever gets it, the first word, yes. Let. Let. What? Romans 13, 14. Oh, I'm sorry. I was reading 
13, what? 14. All right, I got it. My memory, back, good enough, okay. I, my mind went blank there. It says, put on, put on, all right? The Lord Jesus Christ, all right? And, and make no provision for the flesh. No provision for the flesh that you can honor or help the lust of the spirit. Make no provisions. You know, we uh, sometimes don't realize the flesh is a powerful thing. We've lived in it all our life. We've lived in it all our life and we've done the things that we always want to do. And I'm going to show you when you talk about today, carnal and carnality. Carnal means different things. Carnality means different things. See, carnal means, you know, you're talking about the body and the things that happen in the body of Christ, okay? Uh, carnal means you see, smell, taste, touch, and hear. That's what carnal means. Now, all carnal is sin, but all carnal is not carnality. I'm going to let you think about that. All sin is carnal, but not all thing is carnality. And then if we go on, move on to Romans 8.38, Paul says, For I am persuaded, I am persuaded, 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 that ne neither death nor life, now think of this, death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, no powers, nor things present or things to come, high or lower things, or anything created, okay, will separate you and me from what? The love of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? <coughs> separate. Nothing can separate us. Nothing. Nothing. No, I don't. I have a good way of memorizing things, and I know that when I go to this, my Lord just sends me to do this and do that. But when you talk about carnality and carnal, there is a difference. You know, we have that flesh every day. We eat, smell, taste, touch, hear. But if it gets out of order, it becomes carnality. Hear me? Now let me show you the difference. We become righteous. Genesis 15, 6 said, Abraham believed in the Lord, and the Lord counted that unto him for righteousness. righteousness. Now you know what? You can become unrighteous, unrighteous. and still saved. Mm -hmm. You see, you're not overnight perfect. You're a Christian under construction. And that's why Romans 8, 38 says, for I am not a... Sh for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels are going to separate me from the Lord Jesus Christ. So remember that. You're on your way to heaven. And you ought to look like it. You ought to smell like it. You ought to see like it. You ought to talk like it. You ought to feel like it. And I'm not ashamed that I am, came from the background that I come from, and he did too, as he told me. Could I have turned him down today for help? Yes. But the Holy Spirit wouldn't let me. And I'm going to tell you, we, our time is short. Maybe someone will be helping your family and your kids that you don't even know about. They may be witnessing to them where you can't. You know that? Aren't you so fortunate to have a child like I met... Uh, the pastor's son here, or this over the associate pastor there, uh, Stan, uh, his son. Man, oh man, I looked at him, at six foot 11 or whatever, you know. He, he's a stoward in the Lord. You know that? And I, you know, I didn't have to witness to him because, you know, my theory was when you witness to somebody, find common ground. Of course, I didn't do like him, did you play basketball? Because he already told me he didn't. But, it's a stoward in the Lord. And he's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You ought to be so proud. I'm so proud of my children. 
Are they where I want them? No. Do they understand the spirit and the flesh? No. Do you understand the spirit and the flesh? No. You are learning. You are growing. You hear what I'm saying? You're learning and you're growing. Now, Romans 8, 1, I love. Everybody loves this. Therefore, there is no condemnation in them who are in what? Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after spirit, for the spirit of the law, flesh. It is the spirit of the law. And it tells it all about why we're not condemned. We're not condemned. When you take the spirit today and look at the people around you, you can tell them, you can tell by their works, by their lifestyle, whether they're in the spirit or out of the spirit, whether they're saved or they're not saved. No, you're not judging them to hell. No, but you are supposed to be a fruits inspector. I know, because they inspected me for many years when I first got saved. Like my family said, one of my sisters, you were a drunk yesterday. I got saved and she said, and you're telling everybody you've got to become a Christian. And naturally I had a motel, naturally and all that. But I had to start showing my own family the difference between the flesh and the spirit. Believe me, people. You're not going to make any friends when you speak the truth. People will say I'm a false prophet or all that phony stuff. They don't even know what they're talking about. They are the phoniest. There's so many false prophets out there today. So many phony Christians. And if you're a pastor today out there and you're not speaking out against the evils in the political system, get out of the pastorship. Get out. Not the good parts. I'm talking about what's happening across this country, politically. Don't ever back down on some guy who speaks out against you. That makes me even more eager to preach the Word of God. And this is the people in the church, too. And we are talking about Romans 8.1, Therefore there is no condemnation in those who walk after the flesh, who don't walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. It's the Spirit that has changed my life. Where did the Spirit come from? The cross of Jesus Christ. Without the cross, we don't have nothing. Paul said we are most miserable people. Now, I'm going to try to show you a couple of things between the carnal and how it works in your life and my life. As I said before, we know David, the story of David. Remember I said, what do the carnal mean? See? Smell? What did David see? Shall I tell you? You know. Standing on a banquet, on a balcony, looking down, right? Is that a carnal spirit or is that a carnality spirit? Carnality. See? Carnal, you can eat food, do stuff, but you know what? You can overeat too, and you can cause your body to cause problems, all right, it could become carnality too. It's not easy to preach a sermon like this because people don't want the truth. Jesus said in 836, if the Son shall set you free, you are free indeed. I am no longer an alcoholic. I am no longer a compulsive gambler. I am no longer an adulterer. I, the manifestations of the flesh in Galatians 5.19, I'm going to tell you there's 17 of them which I memorized, which I have to sometime because they ties in with my message here. If you go to Galatians 5.19, that says the manifest, manifestations, manifestations of the flesh, which is the outgoing, the showing of the flesh. David committed adultery. Think of this. How about back in Genesis, when Pharaoh saw Abraham sporting his wife or something, right? There wasn't even a Ten Commandment. They weren't even given. 
David knew the Ten Commandments. Pharaoh didn't. You think of this, right? Old Testament, New Testament. We can lie all we want. Come lies will go down from generation to generation. Let me show you how. Abraham, a liar, said to his wife, get up front there in a battle to save my soul. He lied, half-sister, and she did. Did that go down to the next generation? Isaac, like father, like son. He had a battle, right? Rachel, Rachel was Abraham's, uh, uh, Isaac uh, was Rebecca. She did the same thing. He lied. Generation cursed, you ever hear that? Let's go on Jacob. Jacob had sons. Joseph come along. Eleven sons lied to their father about the son, their brother, being killed. Is that a generation curse? Think of that. Is that carnal or carnality? That's a lie. You see, every one of us today have areas of our lives that we have to work in. In, in Galatians 5.19, it says adultery. It names it adultery, fornication, adultery, drunkenness. What does it say about drunkenness? In Romans also 8.28, it says drunkards will not enter the kingdom of God. Huh? Well, God forgive me. Yes. But there comes a time when he says, I will turn you over to a reprobate mind. Think of that, people. How many times today, in, in, in an adultery and drunkenness, fornication, it goes, it's envy. There's another one right there, envy. Envy can become a carnality sin. Envy. What else in the, in the Galatians there? There's 19. And fornication. Another one is hatred. Do you know people hate each other because they got hurt? That's another carnality. If you keep on going through them, there's 17 of them. There's, you keep on going, I call them ill, lasciviousness. There's a way all these sins that come out. Then, then there's a murder. That's another one of the 17. There's idolatry, idol, idol, not adultery, adultery. That's another one of the 17. You see, God had a plan for you from the very beginning, from the very beginning. Do you think that I would be standing here in a pulpit telling you about Jesus 46 years ago when I owned a motel and was involved in all kinds of sexual activities, drunkenness, gambling, lying, but God, listen, chose you. You thought it was me, didn't you? He chose you. He chose you to sit here today, to sit here today, to help a young man I don't know. Are you going to help somebody you don't know? Or you're going to make excuses like I tried to and didn't get away with it. I love it when the Holy Spirit puts me under conviction. Did you ever wake up in the middle of the night and you know you did something wrong the day before? I don't, don't put your arms up, but I'll put mine up, both of them. No, he put his arms up, he knows. You see, you go through all the idolatry, greed, not read, greed. <laughs> idolatry, lasciviousness. There's all these manifestations of the flesh that makes the war go on between the flesh and the spirit. There's another one that's called re re revolving around different areas of our lives. Stress is one. Witchcraft is one. Witchcraft. Wrath is one. There's all these in that Galatians 5.19. If you take each one of them, you could speak a subject on one subject. You know why? The Word of God penetrates the Spirit. Remember we said Paul says, 
I, I, I like Paul because he was one of the greatest, if not the greatest we know, evangelists that there was. We know Jesus was the greatest of all. Don't kid yourself, you know. Somebody said, oh, you better be careful. Oh, no, come on. Romans 13 says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for one thing, the 17 things I just told you about. Don't make provision. Why? Why? Because you may be losing your soul. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, your emotions, your conscience, all into one little blanket called your personality, right? Your soul, when you die, when we get raptured, and I believe in it right now, and I don't care whether you believe in the now, in the middle, or the end, it'll all pam out in the end. Be ready. Be ready. Are you ready today? Do you want to hear a message? Sometimes I love to hear a message because, you know, I say, well, Steve one day stepped all over my toes, but I couldn't even put my hands over my ears because it kept bothering me. But you know what? How do you know there's somebody out there today that's going to get saved through our YouTube on here at Cedar Avenue Bible Church in Sharon, Pennsylvania? How do you know? How do you know the man off the street I picked up might end up as a pastor? You don't know. God has a plan for you, a plan for me. I'm not a pastor. I tell you, I couldn't be a pastor. I don't want to be a pastor, although I'll set in and do a few. But God called me, Don Reed Sr., to go out and be a witness, Matthew 28 and 19. Go ye all into the world. You remember the man that come out of the tomb? He came to Jesus and he said, Jesus, thank you for saving my soul. I'm ready to go. And Jesus said, go home and tell what great things God has done for you. He didn't say go out Pennsylvania, New York, Chicago. Go home. And when you go home, what happened? You're going to get criticized. You're going to be looked upon. You're funny. They'll call you all kind of things. Your sisters and brothers will come against you. You'll get a whole new bunch of friends. Don't you worry. I promise you that. And when you get in trouble or they get in trouble, guess who they'll call? Amen. They'll call you. They'll call Stan. They'll call Marcia, Steve, Ron, all of us, John. They'll call Anna, Dave. Everybody here is a possibility. Think of this of helping some person if you will make yourself available. Remember Paul said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life. I, I love these scriptures. I only wrote the three ones down and I memorized them because that's my way of teaching. But you know what? When you become carnal, people will recognize you. They don't call me anymore for gambling, for, uh, for uh, poker games. <laughs> <laughs> they used to call me. I was first on the list because he was the biggest one with the biggest money. You know, I gambled one night and I won everything in the pot. Nobody had any money. I started loaning out to them out of my mind. I ended up losing everything. Then. What I won, and I my own pocket. Possessed what? With another spirit, a fleshy spirit. Are you going to go to hell for playing bingo? No, don't get this. Don't start getting some of these incidental things that it can lead you into something. But you know what? If you get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, you will know that you know that you know. I know where I'm going. And everybody here in this church I know knows. But there's a lot of people out there and in other churches that don't know. And the bad part of it is they don't want to know. They have revelation. 315, I wish you were cold or hot, but if you're lukewarm, I guess what? I will spew you. Wow. Doesn't that scare you? You know, fear is torment. The Bible says in Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. 
wisdom. It doesn't mean you know God. I feared God, but I just didn't mean nothing when my lifestyle come to it. I knew the Ten Commandments, a little bit of them. You know them. They didn't know them in Genesis, and they were more powerful in then than we are today. Did you know that? Genesis, the Ten Commandments is all through Genesis. But God says, I'm going to write them on your heart. I'm going to take out that stony heart and put you in a fleshly heart so you know the difference between right and wrong. And yet, back in Genesis, they still had a stony heart. And they knew Abraham, Pharaoh, why didn't you tell me that was your wife? Doesn't that make sense? You see the conscience, our conscience, can become seared so hard politically today. The conscience on people is so seared today, people. You can talk all you want. Our country is the greatest country there is. I'm a veteran. Never served in any war. Played basketball during the career. <laughs> sort of laziness, but I did it. Couldn't stand that kind of training, so I took up and played sports all my career in the Army. Played baseball. But I know one thing. God was working in my life. I was a liar. I was all of the 17 things I just mentioned to you. Adultery, drunkenness, envy, hatred. All of these things was in my life. And I'm working now daily. Paul says we die daily. Some people won't understand that. That doesn't mean you're born again, born again, born again. No. When the people left Egypt, God made them go into the wilderness. They didn't went north. If they would have went north, they'd have been defeated. They weren't ready. He set them down at Mount Sinai and he gave them the Ten Commandments. He had to start somewhere with you out there today watching this program. Crutching Cedar Avenue Bible Church. Pastor Walters, every once, every day we have Pastor Stan August. We have pastors on here preaching the word of God. Are we the biggest church? No. Are we want to be the biggest church? No. But our object is to bring people in off the streets just like I did today and you did and every one of us. Remember people, Judgment Day is coming. Judgment day is coming. I'm ready. Are you out there? Everybody in this church is ready. Think about it. When Paul talks about the scriptures, Paul going down the road to Damascus got knocked. If it has to be you out there, I don't care. I hope you get knocked off your high horse. I tell you what, I forgot there was one more during the manifestations and that was pride. There'll be more people in hell with pride than anything else. Did you know that? Scripture teaches that. The three things God hates, you know, is murder. Uh, uh, and, and also, I had three of them that I remember, but it's murder. One was the ruination of kids and animals and so forth. There's certain things that God hates, literally hates. If you don't believe that, go there. The Bible hunt up them three things that God hates. He hates, he hates what men have done to children today. That's what's happening to our country. And it don't bother most people. They go to church Sunday if they do, and that is it. They don't want to go to a Bible study. They dare not open their Bible. They have no desire to read the Bible. They have no desire to tell somebody about Jesus. You know why? The flesh is in control. But when the spirit comes in control, flesh, spirit. It, says, it, is, a, it is a spirit that quickens the flesh, prophet, nothing. John 6, 63. It is a spirit that quickens the flesh, prophet, nothing. I love when I know I'm in the spirit. I pray in the heavenly language. Everybody should if they have it. You can have it. There's no excuse for not seeking it. 
If you want it, that's okay. You can get it by calling me. I can show you how. Receive. When you're saved, by the way, you're not saved by speaking in tongues. You're saved by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 16, 31. And memorizing the first scripture I did, 1 John 1, 9, if we sin, I confess my sins. He, who's he? Jesus is faithful and just to forgive me for my sins and cleanse me from what? Some righteousness? All. Oh. You mean yesterday? Yeah. You mean today? Yeah. How about tomorrow? Well, a few people out there don't know me. My name is Don Reed Sr. I never told you that when I first come on. I have a ministry called Crossing Pass Television nationwide. We're on Cornerstone TV in Central Florida, Southwest Florida on CTN, Cornerstone TV, WYXF on Youngstown, and WKBN. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus is real. This church is here to tell you for a reason. We have a Bible study here. You see, some churches don't even have a Bible study. Can you imagine that? The pastor don't have time. He don't preach on the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want you to, right now, out there, whoever you are, this is my sermon. One little piece of paper. The rest is in here. The rest comes out. It comes out as you memorize and read the Word of God. This is very important. Do you know Jesus? You said, well, I've been baptized. That's good. You get down a dry liar and you come up a wet liar. Remember we talked about lying? Manifestations of the Spirit, flesh? Why don't you today, maybe you're in front of your TV with your family, your wife. Maybe you got a divorce. Maybe you're on the run. Maybe you killed somebody. Maybe not. God can forgive. David killed somebody. If you read the story of that. He had somebody else do the dirty trick. This is what happened today. People don't realize that Jesus is coming through. They say, well, you've been saying that for years. Well, they couldn't come until 1947, people. And it's on. We're ready to go. Ready to, we could go right today, every one of us. Praise the Lord. Let me hear the praise the Lord, somebody. I'm going up. I'm, go, I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for the upper taker. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Now you say this prayer and think about it. Don't worry about feelings. I'm going to say that again. Don't worry about feelings. You go through faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Genesis 15, 6 says, Abraham believed in the Lord. When he left Ur of the Chaldean and went to Haran, he wasn't saved. But in Genesis 15, 6, Abraham believed in the Lord. And the Lord accounted that unto him for what? Righteousness. Righteousness. I'm in right standing with God here today. Do I have problems? Yes. Does God heal? Yes. Is God going to heal my wife? Yes. Is he going to heal you today? Yes. I don't know why it's not now, but I still believe. You out there. I want to center on you out there. I feel like there's somebody out there. Say this prayer. And don't worry about feelings. I have to say that. Say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Think of that. Died on the cross for me. Personally. Personally, dead and buried. Look at this. Arose from the grave. Walked on this earth for 40 days and 40 nights. And intercede into heaven. Intercede up, see to heaven. And say, Lord Jesus, right now I accept you as the only way to heaven. Not the church. Not the church doctrine. I believe. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I am born again today. And say, thank you, Lord. Now you thank him. You thank him. Say, Lord, thank you. Writing my name in the, I'm born again this day, this July 4th, July 4th, 2021. I am a new creation under construction. And then, Sal, you thank him now. Say, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, 
I'll give you a telephone number, 724-699-2945. That's my cell phone. 724-981-7777. 724-981-9777. Somebody will be by there to answer that phone. We'll give you a free Bible. Cedar Avenue Church will send you free Bibles. No cost. Pray the freight and everything. Make that decision today. Just think, people, closing this now. I make it so simple. You ever been in court? All of us have. I hate to say some wrong. Some just sat, watched. But you have an attorney there. And you have the man that's guilty. And you know what? That attorney is defending that guilty man. Amen. He has to come up with the evidence the best he can. Think of this. Now you die. Oh, I like this. You go to heaven. What right do you got to be heaven, Don Reed? Jesus! Didn't say any of my works. Now my attorney stands in front of me and he's defending me every day. I like this. God showed me this. Every day, Jesus and God on the throne, sitting down. Jesus stands when I die. When those sinners die, you know that. Look at 7th chapter of Acts if you don't believe me. So he's standing there. And God and Jesus are talking. Did you see that? Don Reed yesterday, what he did? Did you see? God's talking to Jesus. Jesus said, yeah. But he turned to God. He's forgiven because of what I did. Isn't that pretty simple? Isn't that many simple? That's what I call kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. There's a way today that we have to come down to the earth, to the people in front of us. And God's given that gift to you if you want it. He's given it to me, and I'm not bragging. That's one of my gifts, and it's one of your gifts. Your gifts may be doing things at the church, cutting the grass, helping the pastor, bringing food, visiting the hospital. You can do something. Just remember, this July 4th, 2021 is the day where the Bible says today is the day of salvation. God bless you all.